Good morning and welcome to St. Luke's Lutheran Church here in Bloomington, Minnesota. So glad that you are present in worship, whether it's in person or online. For those of you who are online, we will be celebrating communion today. So we invite you at this time to find something for your bread, something for your wine, uh, maybe a Danish and some coffee can do. God works through all things. For those who are gathered here, we will be serving on both sides of the rail. Uh, follow the directions of the ushers. If you would like uh, grape juice or a gluten-free wafer instead, simply ask. A couple of announcements. Uh, Advent service gift cards for Kennedy Kids is still happening uh, in the narthex. And uh, prayerfully consider buying, purchasing a gift card to share with a student at Kennedy High School uh, so that they can have a very Merry Christmas. Know that you can also purchase gift cards uh, for yourself or for uh, your loved ones. And through a script program, the church receives a percentage back from each purchase. We had a wonderful celebration for uh, Warren Carpenter yesterday. And um, this coming Wednesday is Dee Wondrous celebration. Please keep her family um, in your prayers. And then on Friday will be John Erickson's celebration uh, at 11 a.m. and keep his wife Barb and the boys in your prayers as well. With all of that said, let us begin with the blessing of the Advent wreath. Last Sunday, we lit the candle of hope, remembering the hope which comes in Christ. Today, we light the second candle of Advent, the candle of peace. God has a peaceful dream for the world, and we dream it too. We dream of a peaceful world full of wolves and leopards and lions, eating and sleeping and dancing and with lambs, kids and calves. We dream of a peaceful world where nations come together, where war is a memory and we eat at one table. We light this candle in peace. I invite you to stand for the confession and forgiveness. In this season of waiting, in this time of preparation, we long to draw closer to God as our comfort and Savior. So often we get in our own way. We make choices that trip us up as we move away from God. So then let us make our confession in this moment of silence. Holy God, we, we often, often forget, forget what this story is about. 
to the birth of our Savior Jesus. We've wrapped ourselves with so much planning, shopping, and decorating, we haven't left time to give thanks for the one who changed the world. Forgive us, open our hearts, so we may share our love for you, your creation, and all your children. Heal us, we pray. Friends, hear the good news. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven, freed to love and serve. Alleluia. Amen. Let us join in singing for all the faithful women, verses 1, 6, and the last. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thank you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Heavenly Father, thank you that you take the simple things of life and servants that are humble in spirit to be lifted up and used by you to your praise and glory. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the first chapter of the letter of James, beginning at the first verse. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes in the dispersion, greetings. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind, consider it nothing but joy, because you know that the testing of your faith produces endurance. And let endurance have its full effect, so that you may be mature and complete, lacking in nothing. If any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. According to Luke, the first chapter. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. And the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have been found favor with God. And now in you, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has conceived a son, and this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God and our Savior Jesus. Amen. Welcome to our second of the four Sundays of Advent leading to Christmas when we celebrate again for the first time, Christ the Savior is born. Last week, we lit the candle of hope. We read about the prophet Daniel, who had a hope that sustained him through his many trials. And then we met Zechariah, a priest, who was pray praying fervently, but who was not prepared for his prayers to be answered. He was going through the motions, not expecting to experience God's presence. When the heavenly being told him, your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, Zechariah asked, how will I know that this is so? But his hope did not disappoint. And this week, we light the candle of hope. Looking at the epistle, the letter of James, and the angel's announcement to Mary, the mother of Jesus. James, it's considered this is Jesus' brother, although many people think it's an anonymous writer who simply gave James, put the title James on it so other people would read it. Also, it's a book that Martin Luther detested. He called it Straw. 
uh, because of that one um, well-known verse, uh, faith without works is dead. And Martin was so uh, concentrated on that one verse that he missed, I believe, the fullness of the letter. James urges Christians to conduct their lives according to wisdom from above, from the God who is the giver of every perfect gift, rather than according to earthly wisdom. The wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is, is sown in peace for those who make peace. Conflicts and disputes arise from unrestrained wants that forget the gifts of God. Maybe your shopping list for Christmas can be whittled down a bit. Wisdom, on the other hand, knows the graceful gift of God's presence and yearning spirit within and is thus enabled to live in humility and integrity with the neighbor. Such humility allows us to know that we cannot do everything, but that perhaps we can do the one thing that is right for today in each moment. We are challenged to be more than mere hearers of the word, but doers in solidarity with all people seeking to build the beloved community. Such community is established and shaped through patterns of the Christian life. James states in chapter 3, such a community has the control of speech for the common good. In chapter 4, the avoidance of conflicts and disputes through humble refusal to judge one another. And in chapter 5, the sustaining power of prayer. If you need an Advent devotion, I encourage you, read this book of James. It gives confidence in the power of prayer, literally, that frames the letter. James begins with the assurance that those who lack the key component of the Christian life, as we heard in our first reading, if any of you is lacking in wisdom, ask God, who gives to all generously and ungrudgingly, and it will be given to you. A person is blessed who asks and receives from God in an unwavering faith. Purity of heart is to, to will one thing. Such persons endure the midst of trials and demonstrates a good life that their works are done with gentleness born out of this heavenly wisdom. Mary embodied that. When she heard the angel Gabriel announce, Greetings, favored one. The Lord is with you. She was initially perplexed and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, for you have found favor with God. And then he tells her that she will bear a son. He will be great and he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Gabriel's parting words ring with reassurance. Nothing will be impossible with God. And then Mary said, Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Nothing will be impossible of God. It is what we hear in the first book of the Bible, Genesis, in chapter 18. When God forms the covenant with Abraham, his wife Sarah announces, Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? And later in this book of Luke and also found in the Gospel of Mark, Jesus declares, what is impossible for mortals is possible for God. It is a promise with a future tense. With God, nothing is impossible. All things are possible. From this tomb, we have the resurrection and eternal life. God chose the lowly rather than the high and mighty to fill, fulfill the plans of redemption. From the remnants of an early church fearfully hiding in Jerusalem, the Holy Spirit can empower it for a worldwide eternal mission. That is the only reason we are here today. Through the Holy Spirit working through those before us, we now gather. Do you, do we desire the Holy Spirit, to work in and through us here at St. Luke's and in our individual lives. 
Today, many assume that those whom God favors will enjoy the things that equate with a good life, social standing, wealth, and good health. Yet Mary, God's favored one, was blessed with having a child out of wedlock who would later be executed as a criminal. Accessibility, prosperity, and comfort have never been the essence of God's blessings. The Advent season is important to remember. The glory of Christ came about by the willingness of ordinary people to obey God's claim in their lives, sharing the hope and peace, knowing joy and love, being a light for Jesus in this dark world. You need to be at peace with yourself first to be able to be at peace with others. Anger is a secondary emotion. The first one is, comes from within. And to seek peace for all humanity, that comes when you create a space for the Holy Spirit to fill you with the peace that surpasses all understanding. Mary was a witness to that peace. James' community was urged to be a witness to that peace that surpasses all understanding. You and me, St. Luke's, and all Christians are to witness to the peace that surpasses all understanding. For Jesus in the Beatitudes stated, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be children of God. If you call your ch yourself a child of God, then you must be a peacemaker. And that is who we are called to be, servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. May that be made known not only in our greetings with others, but in everything we do and say. Yes, there is much despair and division in the world, and I started my sermon by listing all those things, and I thought, we all know those things. What the world has not known and has not been lifted up is this hope in Christ, this peace that surpasses all understanding, this kingdom that shall have no end. It seemed appropriate to close with the prayer of St. Francis. Many of you know it. Some of you may not. I, if you do not, please meditate on these words. For those who know it, please join me. Lord, Make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, divine master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. I invite you to stand now and join in singing The Angel Gabriel from Heaven Came, number 265, in the back of your hymnal.
Let us now join together in professing our faith through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With longing and hopeful expectation, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Fill the church with your spirit, that it may be a messenger of peace and goodwill, God of love. We wait and hope. Anoint the leaders of nations to protect and care for those who are vulnerable, weak, poor, and oppressed. God of love. We wait and hope. Fill us with gratitude for sun, moon, and stars as to we today mark the shortest day of the year and welcome the light. God of love. We wait in hope. Shelter all who are hungry and homeless. Strengthen all who are perplexed or afraid and comfort all who are grieving or ill. God of love. We wait in hope. Draw near to all in this assembly who will travel or welcome others this week, who are expecting a child or struggling with infertility, and who face the holidays with eagerness or anxiety. God of love. We wait in hope. With Mary, we ponder the mystery of your grace and give thanks to those who have gone before us in the faith. God of love. We wait in hope. Receive our prayers, faithful God, as we watch and wait for your coming among us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all of you. And also with you. Please provide a sign of peace to those around you with a wave, a smile, or a verbal hello or peace. <laughs> peace be with you. At this time, those of you who are online, if you uh, have not gotten a piece of bread or uh, a glass of wine, something to join us at the table, I encourage you to do so. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. he was betrayed, the Lord took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. 
This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and after giving thanks, gave it all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you for the forgiveness of sin. Take and drink. Do this in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we share the body and blood of our Lord and Savior who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The congregation may be seated. For those at home, this is the body of Christ. Take and eat. This is the blood of Christ. Take and drink.
I invite you to stand. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen you and keep you in his grace and peace. Amen. Loving God, you have fed our spirits with your word of hope and your food of life. Empower us to go forth strengthened and renewed to serve the world you love. Be people of peace. Let peace live in your heart and share the peace of Christ with all you meet. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us join in singing Soul Adorn Yourself with Gladness, number 488.
Lord.